Hi, my name is Ashley, and I blog over at senoritaspanish.com. Uh, oh, one of my older blog posts is about using Google Forms for speaking assessment rubrics, and I get questions about it all the time. So I just thought that I would do a quick screencast and walk you through what a rubric looks like that I might use for a speaking assessment. Um, so hopefully that can kind of help you give get a better visual of what, what I do and how it works. So this is just the front page of the form. All I do is name, like, the level, what chapter we're on, speaking assessment. Um, they have to enter in their last name, their first name, and their class period. These are required questions, so <laughs> there's my beautiful last name and first name for you. And then we click next. Here we get into the, the actual rubric part of the form. So here I have a drop-down list of some questions that I might ask them for that speaking assessment. This one happened to be about preterite tense or using preterite. So that's one of those questions that I could ask them. Sometimes I show them the questions ahead of time. Sometimes I just say, hey, we're going to be using preterite in a speaking assessment. So I'm going to chat with you about what did you do yesterday or last weekend. Uh, it really depends on the assessment, whether or not I show them the questions ahead of time. So I'll ask them, and then just as we're having a quick conversation, I'll go through and be clicking on their computer because they have the form up. You know, fluency, listening, comprehension, and accuracy are the things that we've chosen to grade as a department. So just clicking wherever they earn on each rubric step. Um, and then we usually do a follow-up question. So if they said, pues ayer yo miré Netflix con mi familia, I might ask, oh, um, ¿cuál programa miraste? And then depending on how they do on that follow-up question, you know, they can earn some more points. Um, and then, again, you just enter in the total. Sometimes it takes me a second to do the math because there's half points involved, but, you know, it's, it's usually pretty quick to just type, type, whatever you want to do. Uh, and then I always have a space for additional feedback. Uh, sometimes I just type in something like, oh, right, if you said, oh, yo come la cena anoche instead of yo comí, um, or sometimes in this section, I will do like checks, check boxes, which is an option in the Google form setup. So if there's something that I hear a lot of my students doing, it's faster for me to go click, click, click than to type in the same thing every time. So that is also an option. And then as you scroll down, you can see a copy of your responses will be emailed to, and this is my email because I currently have the form open, but it would be a student, right? So as you complete the form and click submit, the students will get a copy right away. And then I access the, the grades in the spreadsheet that the form automatically creates. Um, realistically, what I'm actually doing, so the students have their forms pulled up on their computer. On my computer, on my desk, I have our grading system set up. So for us, that's Skyward right now. Um, the students come over, we do the speaking assessment. I click through this rubric, click, 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 type in the total, type in any additional feedback, click submit, hand the computer back to the student, turn to my desktop and just type in their points on the Skyward system or the grading system. And then I call up the next student and just really quickly through all of my students, I can get through a whole class period pretty easily like this. So I hope that helps kind of clarify how I use this system. I hope that it works out for you. Um, we're, this is probably one of my favorite ways that I've tried to do speaking assessments, especially in some of my larger classes. It really makes things more efficient for me, and I don't have to make copies of the rubric, so yay, save the trees. All right, thanks.